There are a lot of underrated games out there, especially ones that were on old consoles that you can't play without having the original game. And one of those games is iNinja, a game that I have very vivid memories of playing as a kid. I remember playing it a lot and having lots of fun with it, but I never beat it. So I decided to scratch my over 20 year itch and go back and see how good iNinja really was. So iNinja is a platforming game developed by Argonaut Games, published by Namco and was released on November 18th, 2003 on GameCube, PS2, Xbox, and PC. There was supposed to be a Game Boy Advance version too, but was cancelled. But thanks to the works of Hard for Games, same, they were able to dump the unreleased game online. Maybe I'll go play it some other day for a video. Another weird thing about the development of this game is that Don Bluth worked on the cutscenes, who was famous for many great animations and working on other games. Just really doesn't seem like his style for this game. Just booting up this game was super nostalgic for me. Seeing the developers titles pop up just shot me back to the early 2000s, sipping on Chubby's soda and playing this game on my GameCube. The game starts off with a cutscene of our ninja, who is voiced by Billy West. Sensei! Ninja! <laughs> trying to save his sensei but ends up murdering him after getting engulfed in rage from absorbing the rage stones. The objective of the game is to collect the rest of the stones who are being held by the antagonist Emperor Odor. Odor is causing havoc everywhere but our protagonist ninja isn't really worried about that. He just seems to be hooked on the high he gets from the rage crystals. You got any more of these? Just by watching this first cutscene you can tell that this is a product of its time. The crude and violent humor wouldn't be in many games you see today. And some of it's a little cringe, but it's just barely watchable. You just get sh That's pretty much it for the story though. There's not a whole lot there. What holds up this game is the gameplay for sure. The game has you hack, slash, and platform your way through five unique worlds with many levels and challenges to complete. And let me tell you, all of it is so much fun. Ninja is equipped with an upgradable sword that allows you to slash, spin attack, throw ninja stars, perform special abilities, and perform many other combos to defeat your enemies, which is super satisfying, especially when you chop an enemy in half. I remember thinking that was so cool as a kid. The only thing I wish they had in this was maybe some kind of roll or something to get away from enemies, but hey, you, you can't have everything. One thing I learned in this playthrough actually is when you do the jump attack to like slice the enemies up in the hair, that breaks their guards and I didn't know that for a little bit and that made combat a lot easier after that. The platforming in this game is a lot of fun, a truly unique experience. You can double jump, helicopter fly your sword around, hook shot across gaps, run up half pipes, grind rails, and so much more. Almost every level in this game has a unique gimmick that keeps the level design fresh and new. Like racing a fuse to a bomb before it blows up, shooting down boats, or my favorite are the monkey ball-like levels. But there's a lot of versatility to this game that keeps everything super fresh. Every boss fight are super different from each other and a lot of fun. The first has you fighting a robot in an almost punch-out-like gameplay. The second has you pilot a submarine. The third has you pilot a mech suit. The fourth blends the platforming and combat into the game. And the last boss is honestly the worst. You just attack them normally and it's kind of lackluster for the finale of the game. Also the last boss is just shitting himself all the time. And for the first part of this fight it's super awkward and weird with just no music and just fart sounds. <laughs> some other downsides of this game is the camera. It's a little slow and causes some situations for some jank angles. J jangles, jank, jangles, jank angles. <laughs> this is fucking weird. Every time you complete a level, you are given a grade that goes towards a belt that opens up more of the levels and you can replay the levels with new objectives to earn more grades. This has you backtrack across the hub worlds a lot, which is very tedious, especially in the late game. Other than a few levels being too long and overstaying their welcome, like the turret boat level. That's the only other bad thing I can say about this gameplay. Everything in this keeps the gameplay so fresh and fun. I had such an awesome time replaying this and beating this game for the first time. The story is definitely dog shit though. It's just super goofy and nothing in depth, but the gameplay is all I need in this game. This game seems to have a dedicated fan base, a somewhat active Reddit, a speedrunning community, and people wanting a sequel. 
which was teased but was eventually scrapped. And I saw someone emailed Argonaut Games about it and they said it's possible for a sequel if a remastered edition was a success. So come on, let's get a remastered version out. So that's about it with iNinja. Another great game from my childhood that is vastly underrated and deserves a sequel. Subscribe to hear me talk about more games from my childhood or just whatever I feel like uploading. 